Hello everyone! Welcome back to Nuffy Cat! <laughs> We're very glad that you can join us today. Thank you very much for being here. So in today's video, I want to talk about 11 common habits that affect your financial have your financial life they are often most of these are going to sound like 11 common bad habits that affect your financial life and that's a deal sometimes we aren't paying careful enough attention to the way that we do affect our own finances and I want to discuss that so that you can help turn yours around. And, you know, these are simple things that you'll find that you also usually use in other areas as well, in other parts of your life. But finances, as we've talked about, are an area that a lot of people use emotional decisions and make emotional decisions. So one of the first things, and all, a lot of you relate to this, is impulse buying. That's like if you're walking down the street and you see that favorite shirt or that shirt that just stands out and you can't stand not having it. You haven't made sure that you have enough money. You might not have money even arranged for it, but yet you buy it. That's impulse buying. Reason number two is when you splurge and spend too much. This is what I've done and particularly for me personally with grocery buying. And that's also an area of just not being careful, not being paying attention like you need to, and being aware of just how much you're actually spending. Yeah, some of those grocery stores have gotten a few tendies from me, I'll tell you what. Number three, I think a lot of us will relate to this, procrastination. <laughs> Putting things off that we shouldn't knowing we have certain things that we need to do and to take care of and then putting it off not taking care of it in time sometimes maybe even being late sometimes just sometimes not taking care of it like we need to for whatever reason and we also sometimes do our best <laughs> subconsciously at least to avoid the situation we'll use avoidance now that's point number four because that's also a big deal. Avoidance usually is kind of tied in with procrastination. Procrastination can be used as an avoidance factor. But when you're having trouble financially or even when you perceive you are and you avoid looking realistically at your money, you're making your situation so much worse and you deserve to have the respect for yourself to take care of that, to treat your money with respect, to treat your finances with respect. When you do choose to not avoid things and to face things, you're making yourself have a better future. You're taking, you're, um, you're choosing respect for yourself and for your life. And it's very, very important that you do and very, very worth it. Sometimes avoidance can, you know, seem seem like a convenient way to handle the present but it really isn't because it affects your future and so sometimes you'll have a momentary seeming reward say if you didn't deal with something that you should have and you avoided it through procrastination then that next week when that bill becomes due or when your credit rating is affected and you're wanting to buy a house your choice now will have affected then so you really need to think about this one. This is something for all of us that are working on improving our finances and on financial education and intelligence to deliberately work on. Number five, and this one's a big one too, lack of organization, not keeping track of what we do with our money, how much money we have, where our money is, how, um, how much we have, what are we spending it on, not keeping track of it, not staying organized. Then when tax season comes around every year, everyone's practically panicking, trying to find all their old receipts, find all their old information and data, and making themselves a very big headache that would have been avoided if they just would have been organized to begin with. So that's an area, you know, one of the little tips to help with that one is just doing something like keeping a spreadsheet. 
then you can keep receipts and monthly expenses and things with those spreadsheets as you fill them out. You keep something like a folder that you have everything in, whether it's an online folder, a physical folder, or both. <laughs> and it can make it a lot easier for you. Things you can do to help with impulse buying or splurging too. And that is to give yourself a small amount of your money. You know how we save 10%? Well, maybe give yourself 10% that you'll let yourself impulse buy. Let's say that you, you keep an extra $20 bill in your pocket from every paycheck, and then you happen to walk across that t-shirt we were talking about, or that shirt, and then you actually can buy it, and you won't have hurt yourself. That impulse buying will have a small little healthy sliver in your life. And I also find that doing things like that keeps it from ever taking over so that you'll spend money that you shouldn't. And same for splurging. When you're doing something like going to the grocery store, give yourself $10 to go spend on something extra like a ice cream or whatever new thing, you know, whatever you're wanting that just looks too delicious to pass up. Number six. This one... I have been guilty, most of these I have been guilty of at one time or another in my adult life. Not prioritizing your financial management. To me, that is sometimes underneath uh, not the, our last point here of not being organized. If you don't prioritize your finances in your life, you're going to make emotional decisions and haphazard decisions with your money. And you can count on it. You can count on yourself <laughs> in your negative ways as well as your positive ways. <laughs> you need to prioritize financial management. And that, that comes down to making sure, let's say, that you have a monthly budget and you have a database. Make sure that you, at least once a week, or perhaps if you can't stand it enough, just do once a month, but you keep everything organized. I recommend at least weekly. For those of us that are traders, we have to daily. Give yourself a reward. I, I like telling people this one because this particular little trick with me has always really, really helped. Give yourself a reward when you do. You know, even just having an organized portfolio is a good thing as it is. <laughs> but even if it might be, you know, you spend half an hour working on all your financial information, give yourself a half hour video game. Yes. Yes. All right, number seven, one that I hadn't prior realized really mattered, and that is goal setting with your finances. If you really want to move forward financially, you'll need to think about what you want to accomplish because if you goal set, you set goals, you can then spell out all the steps that you're going to need to get it realistically. Sometimes part of the reason why people don't have their financial dreams come true, so to speak, is because they never set goals. They never outlined it. They never took the step-by-step -step time to learn and figure out and keep track of things so that they could create that. It is oftentimes those simple little things that keep people from success. And those bad habits can really hurt us. Number eight, not investing early enough in your life. Not taking investment seriously early enough either. And then also with that, not planning for retirement. That, <laughs> that's a very common problem. I, I can't even say how many people I have known who have zero money saved for retirement. A lot of people this day and age try to have this idea of, oh, I'm just going to go invest in, or I'll just, I'll get, just get SSI at that time and everything will be all right. It will all work out. Yes. It's a good thing that you don't do that, is it? Yeah. <laughs> You know that you need to set kitty goals if you want to have successful hunts. And you know that you need to invest. Yes, some kitties save things. Yes, sometimes behaving like little pack rats. <laughs> but for us humans and for the sake of our little loved ones like this, we need to invest. We need to plan. We need to make sure that our futures and thus their financial futures are in good order. Number 10. This one is something that I didn't recognize I needed. But that, it is a lack of being willing 
to learn financially. This is a big one for a lot of us when we get into our adult years. We will look at ourselves, we're surviving, and we'll judge and we'll think that we will think that we don't need to learn anything more about money or anything more about investing. Oh, I've got a 401k. Oh, my financial planner will take care of it for me. And we won't take care of ourselves. Not being willing to learn and grow financially guarantees that we're going to be stuck exactly where we are now or even worse. So really check yourself with that and watch out for that trait because if we stop learning, we stop growing and we need to grow. We need to learn in our lives. We can get a lot farther with an open-minded attitude. And this brings up the last point that I have really seen that goes hand in hand with number 10 and that's arrogance. Thinking that you already know everything financially and that you don't need to learn more. I want to mention a 12th one here that um, I didn't write in and so this <laughs> this will uh, this will be an extra but be careful not to blindly trust financial advisors um, and you know even brokerages don't just blindly trust people and assume that they have your best interest at heart financially a lot of people have themselves and their own best interest at our heart financially. And so you need to watch out for that. Don't just blindly trust somebody who comes in and says, you need to, you need to buy such and such stock. So blind trust is a very dangerous trait in the financial world. And I think it's a rather dangerous trait in all of life. Yes, I do. Trust is something that needs to be deserved and earned. And regard that even about yourself even about your common habits that you might be ha you know, that you might not be looking at that are affecting your financial life in a negative way have courage and know that you can improve those things a realistic look at that is the path to doing so though as long as we avoid them as long as we procrastinate in things they we're not going to get any better but your life and your money deserve the abundance that you see in these symbols look at these full containers of tea look at this walnut with the kitty tail by this little collector's item here yes this is also a wonderful symbol of the abundance that you deserve we have to respect ourselves in our lives enough to give ourselves what we deserve in those ways and you do deserve it and so I encourage you to check your habits and to work on those things. Thank you so much for letting us share with you today. Don't forget to take those paws. And you can press the like button if you'd like the content of our videos. It also helps our algorithm so that more people can watch and enjoy this cute kitty. <laughs> you can press the subscribe but you can press the subscribe button to get all of Niffy Cat videos and you can press the notification bell and then you'll also be informed of his and others that are similar well thank you all very 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 much for this very fun day and I wish you all a wonderful evening and a wonderful day thank you